Well, this is one of the reasons why people love living in New England. The seasons that change. This is my backyard. And look at the colors. Now, of course, it's a gray, rainy day. So the color is going to be more intense. But don't you just love that? You see that? Right there. Boom. Crop that. That's a perfect picture to paint. And why not? Let's play with that. And we don't have to paint it perfectly. This is the whole part about being fearless and not being perfectionist in painting. And that's why I love painting abstracts. It's fearless. So isn't that great? That's why we live in New England, right? With the colors, the changing leaves, all those beautiful oranges and reds and yellows. Except when they fall on the ground. But then that's kind of cool. We could do like a falling leaf you know, kind of painting. I thought we'd do something like a falling leaf. I did one a while ago on my YouTube here and people loved it. So let's try another one that's kind of like playful. Maybe you want to add pen and ink to it. Maybe you want to splatter. Maybe you want to go nuts. We can do some layering, which would be kind of fun. And just exploring. And it's a kind of intuitive painting. I love that. It's like, as you paint, you know, you decide then, you know, some people like to have a plan in place with colors and subject matter and everything. That's great. That's great to have a plan when you're doing like a more of a serious painting, um, you know, of a building or house or even a landscape that you've planned out. But I like intuitive painting also where you just don't plan it. You just kind of go with the flow and see how you feel when you mix the certain colors together or put them on top of each other and just see what happens. Right. That's the whole point. It's like to have fun, be playful, getting out of that perfectionism mindset. We don't want that. Nope. Not going to happen. Don't, not going to do that here. We're not doing that here on my channel. Nope. Nope. We're, we're just having fun. And again, like I say, if you're not having fun, step back, do something else and then come back to it. Right? Because something is frustrating you. Something is bothering you. We don't want to do that. We just want to have fun. So the leaves are falling, the colors are changing and let's play like the leaves are playing moving around of course my backyard it's wet and rainy <laughs> but you see how intense the colors are when it's the gray sky that's the best time to go out and take photographs by the way if you, i'm sure you know that maybe you don't know that but sunny days are nice for getting the um, values of like the dark and light but gray skies are great for those intense colors so there's two two ways of taking pictures you know for subject matter so let's dive in to having some falling leaves okay guys all right, everyone, let's go with supplies and hopefully my camera is going to work fantastic today and everything's going to be great and nothing's going to shut off. <laughs> I'm loving it. So I'm doing, a, I'm using a cold watercolor press, um, excuse me, cold press block, from, a watercolor block from um, Fabriano. This is the one I found that was kind of affordable, it was on sale, I think on Amazon. It's 100% cotton. It's really great because some of the blocks like arches are really expensive and the blocks are great to use for super wet on wet because they're not going to bulk up. They're not going to be, you know, they're not going to do all the wonkiness that you're, you're going to get when you're doing wet on wet unless you, you can um, stretch the paper, which means you're painting water on one side and then flipping it and painting water on the other side. And you're kind of drying it and then that paper is stretched and it won't make all those, you know, bulky little wonky um, dips and divots. So a good, you know, block, if it's too expensive, try to stretch your paper. There's a million YouTube tutorials on how to stretch watercolor paper. You don't need me to do that. So just go, you know, type in a search box on top of YouTube and say how to stretch watercolor paper and people will show you how to do it. And that's what you do with the pads. So I have a watercolor pad here, you know, from Arsh, loose paper. So you stretch it or you could tape it down. Taping it down is still going to have it kind of like wonky if it's a lot of water. And then you could later on just use an iron when it's dried. Put it like, you know, don't iron on the actual painting. Flip it over and iron with like maybe a parchment on top. Not on steam, just on hot and it will flatten out. So again, you could also search this on YouTube. You don't need me to do a tutorial on it. It's just, you know, I'm redundant for that. Okay, so we've got the block which is great for when I what? Playing just a two inch craft, you know, woo, soft kind of bristle brush I got in Hobby Lobby. We can play with my three fourths inch flat wash. I've got my 12 Neptune series round, very loose, thick brush. You know, we got a, a sharp skinny tool, maybe like this nib we might use for leaves, the veins. Or if you don't have like a nib thing like this, a twig, a twig from your yard. How, how funny is that, right? From the branch. Or uh, just a sharp 
pointy thing, even a, I wouldn't use a pencil because then you're drawing in with it, but something sharp. You can kind of use the, the edge of like a credit card or something like that. And then later on, we'll talk about if you want to use um, ink or you know, all that stuff, like adding at the end. So like I said, we're going to play. So I might, I'm going to mix up. So I already pre-mixed some colors. I just made, I have the yellow here and I have some crimson here and the brilliant orange added some crimson to it. This is burnt umber and this is burnt umber with paints gray. But I want to start with kind of with that color and I want to kind of mix up some more. I don't think I have enough. So I had to add some more paint. You want to use a lot of paint on this 100% cotton cold pressed paper. It soaks it up like a sponge. Hot press, it sits on top. Cold press, it soaks right in. I'm going to add that paint gray to it. Going to get a deep brown. Oh, that's almost too gray. <laughs> that's okay. We're real time here. I could edit this out. You would never know. But let's just keep it in. Yeah, really deep dark brown. Really going to water that down. And you can actually add a water to your brush. And this brush is kind of wide, so I have a bigger wide water jar here. I have smaller ones up top. I have about three water jars. So <clears throat> you can start with wetting the paper if you wanted to do that. I think this one we're going to go crazy and just do the whole paper. Sometimes I don't like to do all of it, but this time, because why not? It's a block and I can go ahead and have fun with it. Let's see, which is why I like this big wide brush. It just gets the job done pretty quickly. You could use a sea sponge and do the same thing. But then we're going to paint with this brush. Oh yeah. You can get these really cheap. I think Michael probably has them too. But Hobby, has them. Hobby Lobby has them really cheap. Just grab this paint. So the, it just soaked up that paint already. It's like, it's, what happened? I don't have enough paint. That's why I'm going to mix up more. See, and that's what the problem is. When you're doing a big wet on wet thing. I'm going to grab more pigment. I'm going to go real fast. So if you have a bigger well than I did, you're better off. I'm grabbing that. Just soak that up again. Now that's really wet. I'm tapping it on a paper towel. And I have a thread from this cheap brush. That's the one problem with cheap brushes. You get those threads from coming down. Now, if you saw those leaves that I had and you had that bright blue scar, you didn't want to do that. You want a blue. Okay, that's fine. But I'm not showing the blue sky. I'm just doing like like you were in a cluster of leaves falling down. I have something similar to this on my YouTube. Now, see, it's a little bit darker. I'm just kind of going in these different areas. You just kind of bleed in some of that color. Just even with this brush. I'm going to go grab some water. Tap, 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 Get a little darker. Kind of just twisting it. We're just having fun. Again, don't get in your head. We're having fun. I'm actually standing up too. We do this because you can see better. When you're sitting down, it actually restricts you. Obviously, if you have issues where you can't stand up, by all means, sit down. Um, but if you can, please stand up because it helps. You get freer with your painting. Uh, I show this in a lot of my classes and my uh, retreats. I actually have one coming up in New York City. If you haven't signed up, you should check it out because I have a few spots left. But um, yeah, I will demonstrate how you stand up. I'm just adding some of that orange color while it's still damp. I'm going to go in there and some more of that bright orange. See, I'm just kind of tippy tapping it, moving it around, playing with this. Like the orange leaves are falling. See, I'm just twisting that brush twist. It's a big fat brush. Let's have fun. It's supposed to be about fun. Grab that red. Twist it. Grab that yellow. Just almost like I'm going right, grabbing it. You see, I'm just grabbing in the corner there. So leaves are falling. Don't they look like they're falling? And I'm just kind of twisting the brush. Twist, 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 twist. And look at it. It magically looks like kind of this falling leaves, very abstract, kind of what I was going for, right? Didn't have a plan, just kind of like played with the brush. And then to grab some of the brown now, a little thicker, less water, maybe on this side. Let's see. The corner of grabbing that paint's gray, ooh, darker. See, that could be, if you use the brush this way, you can make it like a nice branch. See, holding it straight up. Look at that. That kind of worked out nice, huh? Grab that thick pigment. Now see the brush kind of sometimes separates. It could be annoying. If you want to grab that smaller flat wash brush and do this, that would work too. Now it's giving you where the leaves will go. I'm going to clean off that brush a little bit. 
because I don't want black kind of tones. I want to go back in with some of this orange, this plain orange. I might have to grab some actual paint. Just grabbing it from this well here. Ooh, that's so bright. Intense though, but that's like the colors I see around. See, so you guys are separating. It's kind of annoying, right? I want to try and put it back together. Come on. There we go. To create that fun little twisty. If that's going to keep continuing being a brat, we might have to switch to a, a different flat wash brush. He's being a brat. Get in line. <laughs> Get in line, brush. Show him who's boss. Twist, twist. Look how simple this was to do. So easy. Lots of fun. You can get your kids to do this. Grandkids. Just tap, 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 tap. Right? It looks like the fallen leaves. And grab some of the yellow. Kind of put that in there. Now I'm going to switch the brush because that brush is not behaving nicely. I'm going to grab a one-inch flat wash brush. Oh, you could grab this guy. Um, get a little wet. It doesn't want to play. It's not being very nice. I'm going to grab some of that green. Because, you know, the leaves have still have some green in them. Let's get some green in there. Of course, that brush and that paint just soaked right up. i got to mix some more. I need like a huge amount of wells. There we go. That chartreuse green. I love it. Just add it, dap it. Do, 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 do. See, I'm just twisting, twisting, twisting and turning. Falling leaves. And you can see I went from... Let me zoom back out if you can. Um, the upper left hand going down and diagonal this way. You could have done it this way, right? This is a composition kind of scenario here. So you could have done it this way, this way, or even down the middle. Now I'm seeing it's kind of bulky. I'm going to add some kind of real contrast up in here. We're just doing like background coloring right now. Maybe that's a little too white. Uh, I'm removing, this is another technique where you remove the paint, you're tipping while well, it's still damp, and you tap, you see the brush, clean up the brush, and tap. It kind of has that bokeh effect. I'm loving it. I'm playing, there's no, I don't have a plan. These are techniques that I talk about so many times, and then you just try and use them in the painting. Removing the color, splattering color. Look how pretty that looks. Oh my God. I'm sorry, but I'm really digging this. Okay, that's getting a little muddy, so I'm gonna clean up my brush and just clean up that paint a little bit. Yeah, removing. If you wanna remove a bigger area, you can just take a paper towel, kind of like whoosh, 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 push it down, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. I like to do it crisscrossy, kind of back and forth, because you want that kind of textural look. Yeah, see, now I'm seeing like, I don't like this orange part up here. I want more brown gray. Sorry, Mr. Orange. You're going bye bye. <laughs> Let's just erase that bright tone. I do love that. And I do want some like falling leaves here. All right, so I'll go back and grab some orange and maybe some red. It's still damp. Twist. They, just, they like to separate. Do like the little twist. It's just abstract falling leaves. I'll go back and then some yellow. So I'm just in yellow tones to that. If you want to start to like really paint a shape of a leaf, so just this twisty movement. So let me grab some orange. So like a line down, kind of go like this way and that way. Or take your brush and see, you can see like how it went like this. So you get that kind of a leaf, actual leaf shape. But we can do that after it dries too. This is just the un under colors. Well, so I'm really digging that. And then up here, it's going to be a little browner. With my pigment. See, I'm getting more intense up here. I'm tippy tapping. It's still damp and wet. Going back on the paper towel. I don't want that such intense color, so it kind of removes some of the color for me. I know. Why you put it on, then remove it. It's just how it works. 
with that dark intense color kind of flying up in here grabbing some of that ar um, burnt umber isn't this fun though there's no rhyme or reason to this do 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 what the see so how the, the damp paper just kind of takes it in a whole nother level I'm just twisting I'm standing up and looking and just twisting and having fun that's what it's all about and then when you get to a point you feel like okay whoosh, I'm done with this this crazy part this is the crazy part I call it the crazy part I'm gonna get a little more gray in here a little intense up in here your eyes gonna go and float up there and add some more intense orange yellow colors get that yellow up in there boo 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 yeah okay so then we could just let it dry and you might have to let this dry naturally because if you don't you can get some like you know sharp little not sharp but the cauliflower edges that you might not want you want a nice pretty bleed at this point you can try and play with um if it's still damp up in here it might not be either using some um, liquid inks i have some brown ones too this is acrylic ink and it kind of repels like gouache does we'll play around with that for a second we'll do like a little splatter and see how it goes just grab the smaller the brush the smaller the splatter the bigger the brush the bigger the splatter a medium-sized brush then Ooh! dropping everything I always like to tap it on top of another brush let's we'll see what happens we're just playing mm -mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. cool kind of cool I'm gonna leave little ones down here Ooh, that was a big splatter oh it's gonna kind of fucking bullseye thing I can remove that so I did the brown I could do some white up there too but that brown I'm gonna remove that I didn't like that that's what the paper towel close by is for boom it's like it never happened so I kind of love this I'm gonna leave it let this all dry kind of natural this has got some kind of weird yellowing thing gonna go I'm gonna remove some of the paint a little bit I'm kind of twisting my brush which we did earlier down below. This is just so much fun. Okay. See the cauliflower thing's happening here. Which I don't mind, because we're going to go over this and paint leaves layering, so you might not even see it. All right, we're going to let it dry and come back. Okay, so once, by the magic power of television, let's dry. Now you can go back in and add some actual formed leaves, you know. So I'm just grabbing a cat's tongue brush because it has that perfect little point on it. Grab whatever brush you have that's a little more less loose, like the bigger 12, whatever, because it's not going to have a nice point to it. 12 is going to be nice and round. It's great for doing some loose stuff, but not some serious pointy kind of shapes. Um, I actually added some yellow to my burnt umber here. I made it kind of mustardy. I put it up here and then the same color as we had before. So we can start playing with that, adding that. Well, so a white cat's tongue brush. Well, simple point. I'll just do like that. Whoosh and then point that little leaf a little bit darker I'm not gonna do like you could do all kinds of shapes you know I'm just doing the simple leaf shape like that and it's all layering so if you wanted to do more of a oak leaf kind of kind of shape wiggly just go down and wiggle 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 come back it's up to you and you can make them bigger or smaller. I, I don't think it matters. You can have different shapes of the leaves. So now that's just, you can barely see that. I'm going to go back in and add some darker color. So you're going to just kind of tap in. Because now that's only wet. It's only going to go where the wet part is, right? Water goes where water is. Not where it's not, so. It's not going to bleed in the other section. So this is where you can play with that sharp tool I was talking about. This kind of looks a little uh, juvenile, kind of goofy, but we can paint over it and make it less goofy. You can take your sharp nib, let's zoom in, 
Okay, this is the feature you're supposed to have with the phone. I don't know why it's not doing. <laughs> I'll just do it normally. <laughs> Take a sharp object and scrape. And the water will go right into those areas. Into all those little veins. Does all the work for you without having to paint it. You could also do that with, you know, pen and ink. So fun. we're going to start to paint leaves. I'm not going to show you every single leaf because you'll be sitting here bored out of your mind watching me paint. But, you know, do that type of leaf. You can do the more one, two, three pointy kind of leaf or four. There's all these leaves outside. Just pick one up. Trace it if you have to. I'm just doing some falling leaves. Right? And that little oak kind of leaf and then a regular leaf I'm gonna be a red one here let's play around with this I don't know where this is going and I'm just gonna play and that's what I said we're not gonna just make it serious and maybe you didn't even want to do this part maybe you just wanted to do the splattering part but this is the part that could be just kind of like change it a little bit more if you want to just stick to one shape, do that. You know, if it's just a simple kind of shape like this, just a simple leaf shape, kind of cascading down. I've added a few like non simple ones, making it a little darker. Just trying to make it a little bit easier for people. This shape is annoying, but see, I have a one. I have the one leaf now. Now that's not going to happen. I can't just have one guy sitting there. Cause he's going to have to have a friend. So he's going to have to have somebody out here. Maybe just a little bit less goofy like that one. Put here this shape and add some darker paint to it. And again, you can still scrape in. Just keep adding layers of this darker brown see different color browns They're kind of falling it's kind of sweet though isn't it kind of like this funky I don't even know what that is Let's just kind of do some simple leaves and you can go scrape again or later we can this dries we can go and add some pen and ink if you wanted to do that but really I'm gonna play with adding some more orange leaves let me get up in here just to point them out like that. You could do the same kind of leaf, maybe smaller up here. That three prong kind of leaf. You want like a nice point on your brush so you can make nice pointy leaves that don't cause you too much pain and trouble. I'm gonna water this orange down. Put another orange, just cascading leaf down here. And then you can just keep laying. When these ones dry, you can layer on top and grab this one. The yellow, see? You can put some yellow in there. Put that bright yellow in there. Sneak that in there. Right? Sneak some yellow. Doesn't that look kind of cool? So it's kind of like down this way. I'm just going to keep playing. And you can keep go back and splatter some more, but you see how simple that was just to add all those mixed colors, twisting that brush in the beginning. So you're gonna add a little bit darker down here. Ooh, you know what's gonna happen though? Your eye is gonna go right there. That's the whole point. <laughs> and you can add a darker stem as well, but I'm really loving how this is kind of just playing, kind of going downward. So you can take the tip of this brush, minimal paint, I go in here and add a nice deep dark branch. It's kind of peeking through. You know, just like that. This is such a fun exercise because in the beginning you're just kind of mushing paint around and then at the end here, again, you're just taking colors and going on top of each other. And it's like such a freeing thing to do. I just don't want people to be all so tight Gonna grab that chartreuse. Let's play with some green, yellow, and peacock blue. Make the most intense chartreuse. 
Let's see how that looks in here. You know, because it's starting to look so brown. Let's add a little green. Ooh, a little pop of color. Just makes it pretty. Can you see how pretty that was? And just add that little green. Add some up here. Don't leave it alone up here. Again, I don't know why my camera seems to be making my painting look so bright, but it's a little bit darker than this. Maybe you'll see it in the picture. It's out. You can add a little deeper green. So I've got Prussian blue and yellow. Get it darker, add some burnt umber. Let's draw a little dark green in here. Let's see what happens. Ooh, that really stands out, huh? <laughs> and up in here. Wow. Uh, I play with that green. Now you can always just tap it out if you don't like it. Tap, tap, tap. Ooh. And then so you left the edges and you have this nice little, nice funky kind of. All right, I got to zoom a little bit. But you see how it left that kind of funky, cool edge? And then you did it when you tapped out with the paper towel. This is the kind of nice colors it really looks like up close. Um, it, for some reason, this new camera is. There we go. You can see that. You can see the colors better. Take some, you're going to layer it. So at this point, you're going to just be creative. You're going to just figure it all out. You're going to move it around and just get the colors the way you want them and everything you like to be. Again, you can go back over each one of these. I don't know how many times you want to do this, but. And then if you want to add some pen and ink in the end, you know, when this dries, it's still kind of wet. You could scrape. I don't know if this is going to work because it might be do the veins this way. I don't really want to do pen and ink so much. I want to just keep it this way it is. So I want you to experiment. Have fun with it. You see I kind of gathered them all up here. Left that kind of the way it is. And this is what you do. And so you could put the veins in or just have this simple, you know, nice washy kind of leaf. But um, since we scraped that guy, you might want to go in, if you didn't scrape the other ones, you could go grab, you know, one of your pointier brushes like the Princeton Long Round. Grab some darker color paint, minimal water, and start to stick in, whoops, some of the veins, you know, just to kind of match it a little bit. I wouldn't do every leaf. It's nice to do some of them. You know, it's just a little indication. Like I said, I wouldn't do every leaf. Just a few so that the sky isn't a lonely bird hanging out if you were scraped. If you didn't even do that, you're good. There's just different ways to play around with this. I hope this was helpful. I hope you learned something. And if I hope, if anything, you had some fun in the process because that's what I want you to do. And how cool is this? It's not going to be the same twice. You can create such great, unique paintings, you know, doing this kind of like loose, abstract thing. And again, if you wanted to go up here, I, I, my friends who love the splatter, this is perfect for you. Add a little more zhuzh, zhuzh, zhuzh up in here. It could be green. Oh, yes. I have those friends. You know who you are. <laughs> they know who they are. Uh, maybe a bright yellow would be nice. Cool. There we go. So that's that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, Falling Leaves Abstract. I was trying to pull it back out with the bright, darker colors. I, I don't know. I'll figure it out. But I love all this. Did that kind of washing, wishy color, and then you add some greens. It's so much fun. So please experiment, please have fun. Please don't get in your head. This is the imperfectionist kind of joy that you will have when you paint an abstract falling leaf tutorial. So please leave a comment below if this was great, if you learned something, if not, if you're getting out of your perfectionist head and you're having fun, I'd love to hear about it. And if you haven't hit the bell notification button, please hit the bell notification button to know my tutorials up. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And also check out my Patreon. Like I said, I have ad-free videos, traceables, exclusive tutorials, and a live stream in the top tier. So thanks guys for stopping by and I'll talk to you later.